Our first guest today is Dr. Stephanie Newman, a clinical psychologist. She's joining us now on Skype. Hello, Stephanie, and thank you for joining us. A mm -hmm. lot of us are very stressed. We're all feeling it. What can we do? What do you advise we can do to cope? So that's, of course, a very good question right now. There is, it's important to try to exercise every day. It allows you, indoors exercise, you know, to reset and regroup. But I like to also talk about mental exercise. There are things you could do to make space for your mind and calm yourself down and allow yourself to adjust to the situation or deal with the um, stress of being locked in, being isolated. So there are apps that you could find, meditation, mindfulness uh, exercises, really leaning into a feeling like the anxiety, breathing in and out, really accepting it. It's real. It's understandable. Um, and at the same time, uh, as you embrace it, you know that you have it. It's inevitable when you breathe out, trying to let it go. Practices like these and good sleep hygiene help people to deal with the daily challenges of the, the forced confinement. Right, and it's not only the grown-ups that are dealing with this, it's our kids too, and our children that are now staying home with us, you know, having to adjust to different routines and schedules. Um, you've written a book, so you, you know about this parent-child dynamic, Barbarians at the PTA. Um, you're a clinical psychologist. When we talk about the kids, how do we help them cope with their stresses? The first thing I think is to explain in simple terms, we are following the rules. We are keeping you safe. We are staying home. We have supplies here. We're doing what we're told and we're taking precautions. And we have to stay off the newsfeed. So I don't want to get anyone over there mad. But no, but it's not great for kids to just see or for adults to see constant updates and, um, and alerts to make two or three times a day maybe that you check in with the news, 11 in the morning, three in the afternoon, dinner time, you know, not just having it on in the background all the time. Mm -hmm. That does increase anxiety and explaining that to the kids and facts help. Um, this is a serious illness, but um, most people that get it recover and of the people that get it, there are a number that become seriously ill, but most people do recover. Sometimes just a, a reality check like that helps kids too. Yeah, that reassurance and like you said, keeping sort of a routine. I think yes. we both need it, uh, adults and children alike. Another uh, viewers have asked, you know, my husband and I were wo both working from home and we're seeing each other all day long, <laughs> which in theory sounds nice, right? But um, it can get a little claustrophobic from time to time. What do you suggest for couples? Um, and couples can be, it's a great question. Couples can be roommates. Couples can be, you know, your shared office mate if you're somehow in an office. Couples are married people or significant others. So couple, couples are everywhere. And um, it's really important to set some ground rules to sit down and say, okay, we're in this small space. I know you like to, let's, so sharing the space boundaries. I know you like to have your coffee alone at 9 a.m., fine. You, you can sit in that chair and you can have your time for your coffee. I like at three o'clock to check my messages. Um, and I need a little background music. So I get three o'clock, you know, be willing to set some ground rules, boundaries to compromise. And it's really important for any kind of couple, all the permutations we just mentioned to, um, have a way to, uh, I use the word reset before to reset. So if things escalate, you have some some agreed upon limits. We're going to walk away. We're going to say um, we're not doing this right now. Count to ten. Leave the leave leave the room a little bit if you have more than one room, um, and agree that you want to resolve disputes. Just being on the same page about that can really help. Remember, we said we wouldn't do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Tensions are high now. People are on edge. So setting some ground rules and agreeing to to work on disputes are two huge things that could help people sharing a space. Yeah, we're definitely feeling the tension. And, you know, like New York, we're dealing with, you know, a lot of isolation, shelter in place, which which is one thing kind of people sometimes fear that. But then there's also boredom. What do you suggest to, to stay away from the, those type of feelings that can really bring us down? Right. So. We are confined, but that doesn't mean we can't socialize. In a way, uh, being 
connected all the time uh, is we're, we have that as a, a privilege now. You can do what we're doing. You can have face-to-face conversations with people. You can do group chats where you you play a game or you get a party together or you, you can even watch a TV show. People get very involved in TV shows or book clubs. You can um, – Somebody told me she's hosting a mocktail party. She's not serving alcohol, but everybody's going to be together and trying to have a social you know, engagement. So it's, it's important not to feel too isolated and to know yourself a little bit. Those were the mindfulness types of exercises I talked about before. If you start to realize, wow, this is a, an Achilles heel for me. I don't like being alone. Mm-hmm. It, next time it might occur to you and you might say, oh, even before you begin to spiral, I'm going to reach out to somebody. Um, don't let it get to the point where you're really anxious. Try right. to set it off at the past. Yeah, find ways to connect. I mean, thankfully, this day and age, we have the technology. We can do yes. these virtual dates, if you will. A lot of my yes. girlfriends have been inviting me to do kind of these check-ins. It is great yes. that we have that. We talked a little bit earlier about talking to our kids about coronavirus. Um, you know, you were saying that as parents, just, just be reassuring and be honest. Yes. It's very important to be honest. They pick up on everything, mm-hmm. children. And they're also, ha- they have access 24-7 to news to technology they know may know more than you know i've had uh, my um one of my kids come in and say D- did you know this just changed no i didn't thanks for the update so it's important to be honest because they will sense uh if you're not and they will also find out well, I want to thank you for joining us so much, Dr. Newman. Um, a lot of helpful tips. I know for me, I'm just trying to do your 10 count that you recommended and reminding myself to breathe. And, and again, we're all going through this together so we can all uh, stay positive as, as best we can, right? No one is immune. We're all in this together and we all are um, connected and uh and everybody shows that they care now. So thank you for having me. Thank you. You take care. 